Well, where the hell is it? Did it go? Oh, there we go. Recording in progress. All right. Now we are, now we're in business. Are you guys ready to go already? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's hit it. Hello, hello, and welcome to our humble little podcast. This is Atlantis After Dark, the greatest place in all of cyberspace. My wife told me every time we have sex, we put $5 into a jar for a nice vacation. Let me tell you what, we're still here. I'll tell you what, (laughs) I'm ready to go already. You guys are too. So let's not waste a whole lot of more time. Let's get right into it and meet today's all-stars. Warming up in the bullpen. Recently, he was on an airplane when he sat next to a Mormon. The flight attendant asked him what he wanted. He said, Jen. She asked the Mormon what he wanted. The Mormon said, I'd rather be savagely raped by a dozen dirty whores than let alcohol touch my lips. The all-star thought about it for a minute and thought, you know what? Me too. I didn't realize there was a choice. It's Biff by Adam West. What's happening, buddy? What's going on? I think I think I would need the I think I would need the drink first. You would do the drink first? Okay. I I wanted to see base, where the pressure point coat. was. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, we are damn glad to have you today, buddy. Glad to be here. I am always glad to have you. Next up, he is the sorcerer supreme of cyberspace. The other night, he was lying in bed with his wife. He told her, I read an article that says humans are the only species where females can have an orgasm. His wife looked at him all seductively like and said, Oh yeah? Well, why don't you go prove it? He sprang out of bed and ran out of door as fast as he could. When he came home at the break of dawn, his wife asked him, What the hell was that all about? He was all out of breath and he said, Sheep, horses, and goats can't. But I can't tell with chickens. All they do is cluck. (laughs) It's Retmus. What's happening, oh, Big Kahuna? Uh, just busy, busy. Busy, Tried busy. Take a break from, you know, all the monotony. Taking a break from the insanity of life, eh? Exactly. That's what we're all here to do. That's what we love to do. And um, for those of you who are wondering, yes, this rounds out our panel of today's All-Stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, our, first, our first post-GCL right, right. episode. Right. I, I figured we were going to have a lot more than this. And then, you know, Sekju is ill. We wish him the best. Um, we, were, we said we were going to talk a little bit about some DC heroes and villains today, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, we just had people fall uh, one by one, kind of like soldiers off the... Uh, <laughs> off the proverbial cliff. So here we are folks. And, uh, we sure hope you are going to be entertained because the next hour, we don't know what the fuck is going to (laughs) happen. We're going to go off the rails. I guarantee it. Um, Oh yeah, but it's going to be a good off the rails. I guarantee it. So stick around. And, um, I guess I don't have anything to talk about in the ballyhoo or the preamble. I, I, I guess this is going to feel weird, but, um, God, let's just get right into DC Heroes and Villains. And that gong doesn't really sound good with that, does it? I'm going to have to come up with a new thing for any Heroes and Villains content we have, because the gong feels sacred. The gong gotcha. feels like it was DCL, and that just didn't feel right to me. I thought I would try it out, and it didn't work. Maybe get like one of the little jingles, like how NBC went, did theirs. <laughs> Maybe something like a ding, 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 you know, right. or something. Or like, you know, gems matching or something like... <laughs> Yeah, or like one of those uh, those radio jingles, D, C, H, and V. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, like you're already thinking. Good God. That would be pretty cool. I don't know if I can pull that off. Maybe I can get Sektu to help me with that. Um, oh, yeah, he'd be pretty good at that. <laughs> um, where else? Where else? Anyways, uh, we're talking about DC heroes and villains, and I do have a couple of things uh, that I want to bring up uh, just to the general public of those of you who... Uh, are following us still and are playing the game. Um, welcome to, uh, I guess, this month's section. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the new tune uh, slash reworks. By the way, is Nightwing a rework? Is that is that a considered a rework at this point? Or are we not talking reworks? Are they just putting him in as a featured character? 
I mean, they they put him in as a feature character. I don't okay. remember in seeing the patch notes if okay. he was changed any. I don't either. Um, they are I, like they are not doing what DCL did in in just like scheduling reworks or whatever. They're they're more, I think, proactively on the fly saying, okay, this needs fixing. Um, let's fix it, and then let's be completely transparent about right. what we did. Um, for example, they nerfed. Um, you know, um, Two Face. I don't they know. Nerf Two Face. To, they nerfed the Flash. About, too, I was but... just about to say the Mad Hatter, <laughs> and, and, then, and then I thought that might be someone more down the line for this right. game, um, <laughs> the Fantasy Realm. Um, but yeah, no. So they nerfed Two Face. Um, they did a little something to the Flash. Uh, I, I think just the positive of of all of it is is the communication, right? And, and I and I think you know so. You're, you're seeing that with Heroes and Villains. You're also going to see that with Rhett's game as time goes on, even more so. So that I, I think if there's any solace we can take right now in kind of our world of superhero mobile gaming, um, we're going to get – we're getting stuff we never got before. Yeah. Roses, kisses, hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Love and attention. little tenderness now and then. If you Sometimes will. Sometimes you need it. That's right. There's a song about that, isn't there? All you need yeah. is love. A time, love, and tenderness. Is that like oh, a Michael gotcha. Bolton song? That's what I was yeah. thinking of. But, yeah. I'm not a Michael right. Bolton fan, by the way. I just... <laughs> if, anyone, if anyone didn't already know, we had no idea what we were talking about today. Michael Bolton has showed up in the first segment. <laughs> right? <laughs> he's oh, an icon. That's funny. Dude, he's like... Have you seen him lately? No, I haven't. Like he's got like all this short hair. He was, he is, and I don't want to talk disparagingly about somebody or disparagingly. Is that a word? Disparagingly? Yeah. You could just say disparage. You don't want to disparage someone. I don't want to disparage someone. Thank you. But um, I saw him on one of these, one of these singing contests recently. There was a singing contest that was hosted by Kelly Clarkson and Snoop Dogg. I don't know if anybody saw that. Yeah, it was a great show. And they had, um, like one person or one band or one group from every state. And it was like the 50 states showdown. It was like uh Eurovision for America kind of. And um, he was on there. He was on that show. He was representing Maryland and it was almost, was it Maryland? Is that where he's from? I, I can't remember where he's from, but anyways, he was representing one of those states up there and he got knocked out in the first round. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, He's he's done pretty much. I mean, again, I mean, did he sound bad, or was everybody else just better? Everybody else is just better. Gotcha. I mean, it's, it's not that he sounds so he bad. hasn't he hasn't like progressed. He just kind of like kept no. all his stuff the same. Yeah, it's it's, it's the same kind of bland. It, it just is. It's just bland, hokey. Yeah. So, so Crap. I used to watch a show. I don't watch it anymore. It just got a little bit too, too much for me. But I enjoyed <laughs> it for a time, and I was surprised I enjoyed it at all because I'm not a big pop culture um, person. Um, but the Masked Singer. Oh yeah. When mm -hmm. they when they dress him up as like like fucking like big dinosaurs and and I and love sing. the Mass Singer. Yes. No, but it's I used to. I just I just this is the first season I haven't watched. Okay. But it's it always amazed me. That like when you talk about like a, a legend, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Like losing, and and it's like, oh, um, Demi Lovato is eliminated in the first week, and then next week we find out the one that beat her was Rob Gronkowski. Like it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like how right? the fuck did that happen? <laughs> oh. like, what are we listening to here? Oh my god! What was that? That that one? Um... I watched that show too, and I think it was last season. Beth, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't there was a comedian, Nikki Glaser? Nikki Glaser got Glaser. very far in that competition, like on her own steam, and she I'm was a, actually I pretty good. Last season too, so I don't, I don't remember that. But okay, I, yeah, I think, I think I missed last season, and I didn't jump on this season. But it just, it, for a while, it was fun because there were there were times where like I could. I actually guessed it and I was like, right. holy shit, how did, how did I even know that? Cause like, I'm not a, like 80% of the people I'd never heard of anyway. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it's kind of like new characters in DCL. 
um, you know, when they, when they come out with some, you know, I'm like, I don't even know who that person is. So how could I have guessed them? Um, but there were certain ones with clues and, mm -hmm. you know, like athletes and stuff that I were, that I was able to get, or even musicians from the eighties and nineties where I was really into music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's amazing to see other, you know, like, oh, how the mighty have fallen. Yeah. It's just yeah. That way. <laughs> yeah. By the way, my favorite mass singer guest of all time was Danny Trejo and I was right. Okay. Ooh, I guessed cool. Danny yeah. Trejo. I was like instantly right away. I'm like, that's Danny Trejo. <laughs> yep. I, I remember that one. I remember yeah. thinking to myself, I've heard that voice. Yeah. I didn't get it. I got some crazy ones. I wish I remembered. Um, I used to keep a notepad by the by the bed because when we watched, <laughs> I'd make notes because I wouldn't remember the clues <laughs> right. from the, 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 the episode before. You were hardcore. And I, I, oh no, I had some good ones where I was like, I, I like circled it and I was like, I know who that is. <laughs> uh, oh. Mass singer, Michael Bolton. Let's go. New Man, era of age. I know. You know what? I was thinking to myself, this, this is funny because this is a perfect snapshot, folks, of what we talk about before the show. <laughs> this is absolutely everything we talk about. Like, we're like, yeah, let's talk some DC heroes and villains. And then somehow <laughs> we go, oh, yeah, sideways. Um, but that's why you guys listen, I hope. The, the I power of Bolton. Right, the power and of Michael the, Bolton. And by the way, this is this is proof positive that if you haven't, they, if you have been on board with AAD through the years <laughs> of of us, that it is not going to change, no. and it won't be. If you don't like heroes and villains, it's certainly not going to be all heroes and villains. No, um, no. And it's going to be a lot of Rets game coming up, which is amazing. And I, I just every time I see another video, and I, I want to thank uh, Hate Mail M Four. Um, if you haven't seen these yet, M4, I think, did a two-hour deep dive with Rat. Uh, Hate Mail did two episodes uh, on the game. And um, go check those videos out because it's going to get you excited about um, what's to come. Hopefully it doesn't get you too excited because we still have some time. But um, it is it is coming soon in the actual sense of the <laughs> word versus the dcl right? definition oh coming when they say coming soon they mean coming soon that screen yeah. was still there like the hour before the game was shut down coming soon it, it was come on now it was they yeah <laughs> oh boy but yeah but please go check out those videos because it's yes. really really some good stuff i watched the two hate mail episodes yesterday because i was a little behind um, uh, and the M4 episode was a real deep dive into the game, which is cool. And we're going to talk a yeah. little bit about that game here today as well. Yeah, we are. And, it, and I know as soon, as soon as we get through the mass singer portion that we the, the mass singer. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I still don't know. Like, I, I can't remember any of the winners of the mass singer except for T-Pain. Yeah, that was a good one for me because I'm yeah. a big rap guy. Yeah. And, and I didn't know him. Like well, you I didn't know like, it's almost as if rap died um like at Eminem for me. Right, okay. Like okay, so it was like everything before Eminem, Eminem and before all mm -hmm. in. Like yeah. my favorite I was I guess I'd say group of all time because it's a it's a conglomeration of rappers, it's right. Wu-Tang Clan. Okay. And they're they, I think they're the best I think they have more platinum albums as a conglomeration than any group of musicians in the history of any any sort of music. Um, because all of them went and did their solo stuff and were wildly successful. And then every time they did something, um, you know, together, obviously that was huge. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I can't speak to that. I, I don't know anything about the Wu Tang Clan. Um, you know what? If you have Hulu, right? Go Hulu. There is a three. I believe it's three seasons. Um, Wu Tang Clan and American Saga. Wow! And they talk about these kids growing up together in Staten Island, New York, and how it all came to be. All the bad stuff that happened, and all obviously the good stuff. And it it's fascinating because because they were this group, this conglomeration. You have mm -hmm. all of these different record labels that are going after all of them. But one guy took the lead, the RZA, and he made all of them sign contracts that he was in charge. And a lot of them wanted to, like, Old Dirty Bastard 
his lifelong dream was to sign with Def Jam. Right. Well, Def Jam wouldn't give him the rights to his music after a certain period of time. So the RZA was like, I'm not signing him with Def Jam. He signed him with somebody else. And Old Dirty Bastard was livid. And it would like come to blows and stuff. But this guy was a genius that ran the Wu-Tang Clan and everyone held on to every, like in the long term, they all killed it. And it's a, it's wow. an awesome story of this group of young um, rappers breaking into the scene and just taking over the music world. You say it's three it, seasons worth of shows? I think it's three. Okay. Like a season is like 22 episodes or like? No, like season okay. probably like 10. Oh, oh okay. 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 Yeah. So no, I was like, that's going to be a lot to chunk through. I guess I'll have to skip lunch. You no, know, I, 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 <laughs> I, I think it's, I mean, listen, I enjoyed it because I, I, I grew up on and loved sure. Wu-Tang Clan. Um, but this, but the, the real, and this is, it is a true story. This is not even one of those ones that's, I mean, I'm sure there's some Hollywoodation of it, you know, but like there is for everything. But um, it is really a true story of all of them for their worst moments and their, and their best moments. Um, you know, that group always didn't get to get, didn't, didn't get along. Let's put it that way. And they're, and this is, this is, they're on a bus going Philly to New York to, you know, what Baltimore. And it, it just, there's a lot of drama. Well, I'm going to have to start checking that out because I do like a good show. Yeah. And it's I don't have much Wu-Tang to watch. An American saga. And it is yeah. exclusively on Hulu. I do have the Hulu. So okay. that's where I watch my Futurama. Okay. Well, I I got the the Hulu um because <laughs> it's almost like some sort of disease. I got the Hulu uh, um from some girl at a bar one time. No. Uh, I got I got the Hulu because it came with Disney Plus and oh, ESPN okay. Plus. So yeah. it kind of got looped in. I think I think Wu-Tang Clan might be one of the only things I've ever watched on Hulu. You know, you realize something Biff, we're like totally polar opposites. Like you like <laughs> ESPN and I want Hulu, you know? You right. got the the rap music, and I'm the rock and roll guy. Right. And you I, got the. And by the way, I I actually, I I think I originally bought that bundle for Disney. Okay. Because me and me and my wife like to watch like Aladdin. Oh right. Okay. And when they came out, when, when they started coming out with all the real world versions of them, like the Little Mermaid and Aladdin yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, I was like, they get released there. And I'm like, oh no, we gotta, we gotta get like our, my wedding song was the song from Aladdin, you know, with me and mm-hmm. my wife, you know, our our first dance or whatever they, whatever you call it. Um, so no, I got it for Disney. I didn't even buy it for ESPN, but then over the years they started adding a lot of content to ESPN that I would have ended up buying anyway because mm-hmm. this this streaming shit is out of control. It is, it is it's fucking out of control because it's. You can get anything you want now, but you got to get it in so many different places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. You know, it's it's and sad thing is all these channels. The whole thing was, you know, it's exclusive. You know, like we you're only going to get this here, and but now they're all turning into cable TV. The old like, oh, now we got commercials everywhere. You yeah. know, it's like all of them are throwing commercials. I mean, that was the whole point of getting the online stuff to get away from advertising, pay yeah. specifically for this. And now they're going back to the other stuff that we tried to get away from. Now cable will probably come out and be like, oh, commercial free. And then everybody will switch back to cable. <laughs> well, they, I, I still don't see a lot of ads. I see ads for things that for like, for, for example, the other day I pressed on by, by accident, I was trying to get to a soccer game and I must have clicked on something and in, in on Paramount Plus, I think, and I, I got to, you know, my big fat Greek wedding three or something. I don't, I don't know. I must, I must have not been paying attention when I pressed enter. Um, but all of a sudden, there was like a two minute ads, like, and I'm like, I don't ever remember seeing an ad before getting to my soccer game. And then yeah. all of a sudden, like the intro to my big fat Greek wedding three came on. I'm like, oh, they must do this just for their movies. own programs well for like or for movies or for premium events i, I don't oh, know i gotcha I, I noticed that a lot of the plans are having the real low cost with like tons of commercials in it if you can't afford like the higher tiers right I, yeah i noticed they're doing that as well i guess to offset the cost 
Yeah. No, I listen, I'm I got to pay. I'm trying to pay attention to, to how many I have and what I have. I mean, I just re- got rid of Apple um, because what and I Godzilla wanted... starts like this month, man, you're going to miss Monarch. I, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, oh, come I, on. Hey, I, I, hey, I got hey. I got I got rid of <laughs> Apple when um, Ted Lasso ended. Mm. And they wanted a premium subscription when Lionel Messi signed in the in the United States for soccer. They all of a sudden said, hey, we're not giving you those games for free. And, you know, as part of their right. Apple, you need Apple TV Plus. And that's where I'm like, OK, I'm drawing the line here. See, we got it free, the Apple TV Plus. I think it was because it was in our T-Mobile contract where you get it for like a year for free. Right. And I mean, I, my son and I, we watch a lot of shows on it and they're really high quality shows. I mean, I love silo that was on there and uh, for all mankind we're watching now. And severance was also a fantastic show. Um, they're, they're quality shows. And um, I, I think they might not have as much as like a lot of the other services do, but I think they sink a lot of money into what they do. To make it top a lot of quality, big, a lot of big names, yeah, um, and yeah, no, definitely. My my other problem with Apple, and what probably one of the other reasons I got rid of it was, I have I have zero Apple devices in my house, so the fact that some of my TVs are now a little bit sunsetted from a, a they're smart TVs, but I bought them ten years ago, right? Um, <laughs> Not and, so smart I, now, right? Ex- ex- exactly, <laughs> they're. They're they're your dumb brother, of right? TVs. <laughs> Uncle Cletus of TVs. Um, exactly, and no, because I bought like I I redid all the AV in my house, including my man cave and everything, like ten years ago, and I got state of the art ten years ago. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, I buy really high quality TVs. I have a Sony only. I know you know not everyone loves Sony, but Sony last, uh, and they won't die. Mm. And and the problem is like my main screen downstairs, I've hooked up to a PS5 so I can get whatever I want there. But to get Apple on all the other ones, I can't stream it. I can't like cook in a Chromecast and do it on my phone because I don't have an Apple phone. Mm. So I'm I, I could there's only of five TVs in my house, only one TV could I watch Apple TV on. Gotcha. And that got annoying. Did you happen to watch Foundation when it was on? No. Oh, it was like probably one of the highest budget shows, like in the Star Trek, Star Wars type genre. It 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 was incredible. Anyway, I like the shows that are on there. I just hate it when they're gone because then you have to wait forever for something new to come out. Like like you said, your Ted Lasso, it's gone. So what are you going to watch now? Right. (laughs) And I understand that. But you gotta. Yeah. They're, they're, I hear all these like banking apps now that like monitor these and let you know, like, are you sure you still want this, this, <laughs> this, 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 this? Right. This. Yeah, it's getting crazy because I can't is believe people like direct. Man. Yeah, and I can't believe people like Directv really haven't adjusted either. Like, I'm so shocked that like still my cost for like a Directv is still so high, yeah. um, because because now they they do have competition, right. Well, yeah, I think the ones that we actually get is Netflix, Amazon Prime Video because it comes with our Prime membership. Yeah, uh, Paramount Plus and yeah. Apple TV. Yeah, I think those are the ones. But we ended up getting like all of them for free because they were benefits of something else that we would get. Uh, we, I mean, we don't actually go out and look for subscriptions for them. It's just we happen to get those. And like Paramount Plus, it's a low tier one with commercials, but you know it was free. So, you know, we watch Star Trek on that and a couple other shows. A little bit of password sharing going on over there? No, no password sharing. They were free ones. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's password sharing is free. Well, I, th- I thought they were cracking down on that. Where like, well, you... yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they are. are they? I think they are. I think they are more so. Um, but there's always, it has to be egregious like over a period of time for them to really catch it because mm. quite frankly i got called one time on netflix they said hey someone just logged into netflix from the dominican republic i'm like yeah me i'm allowed to travel 
<laughs> you know, um, well, it's good. But yeah, it's Netflix good and, and Mastercard, right? They're like, sir, we need to call you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Would we? Would I like? Would, would you like to see my fucking forty eight hundred dollar bill from this all inclusive <laughs> in the Dominican to prove that I can still get my nine ninety nine Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Well, isn't it like if you log into like a different when you're in a different region, it gives you different shows that you can't get unless you're in that region. Maybe that's the reason they were trying to contact you. I know you. a lot on a lot of the sports apps. That's that's absolutely the case. There are some gotcha. things you can't watch from different places um, based on, you know, just blackout rules and stuff like that. Gotcha. So DC heroes and villains. Um, yeah. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Okay, so I got I got I got a question for Rhett, and I know Rhett's not sure. been diving into DC Heroes and Villains because he's been so um, you know focused on getting his own game released. Uh, but you know we had the devs on, you know, and the artwork team mm -hmm. on before. They did release something recently that I find very intriguing. Um, I don't, I didn't buy it mm -hmm. because I didn't find value in it. Uh, but what they did is they built a sale and allowed you to customize what yeah. you were putting in to the sale. That's right. right. They did. Raid, Raid Shadow Legends has done that for like four years. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's just so you can go in here and get what you really need instead of just a blanket. This is all it's being offered. Yeah. You so it, has, it had like three boxes. Right. And you click on the first box and it gives you a choice of... Um, like a bunch of different gear mats, mm -hmm. you know, then you, but you can only choose one. Right. And then you go to the second uh, one and it's, you can choose from either, you know, basically the coins, energy, gems. And then the third one, you're cheering from the, the, the tokens to basically pull new characters. Yeah. Um. So it, it was like 1199. Uh, so, I was very intrigued by that concept because I hadn't seen it before. Cause I never, I never did more than um, 22 minutes of Rage Shadow Legends multiple <laughs> times. Oh, um, with, as, with as many battle, I mean, as many ads that pop up in that, you didn't see what it said that because they're nonstop in that game. Oh. I mean, you get blinded by them. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I, mean, I thought the concept was good. The problem is none of the three tiers had any of the stuff that's really hard to get. Right. So that's right. why I didn't find value in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could see where that would hold value, you know, because like, like I was saying, if it's just a, you know, standard sell, you're, you only get that one option. But like, if you need one specific thing or maybe some shards for a character in a game or, you know, some type of uh, XP to take them to the, over to the next level and you can get it in that pack, then it would hold value to you. I mean, I, I can see where that's a good thing. Instead of it just being a one set thing and you don't get a choice, it's I think it's kind of nice. And it was, it was cool because you you got to choose three different packages, like and and put them together. As I said, just none of the stuff in there. One of them was interesting to me the 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 gear packs because I, there are a couple gear packs that are really holding me back right now. Um, but then the second one was like ah. Eh, you know, energy, you, you lose your energy very quickly. So <laughs> 500 energy is not a big deal. Uh, and then the last one, it was like, okay, I, I get enough pulls and I have enough disappointment in my life <laughs> to not pull anyone I want. Right. I don't need more. I don't need more pulls to be more disappointed. Come on. Um, my luck, my pulls. luck is not, listen. So I had a great seven year run of DCL <laughs> where everyone else complained about RNG. I never had RNG problems. Like I, like I, I I swear to fucking I swear to fucking God, Bart stunned seventy percent of the time for me. Like wow. every you know seventy percent. If I if I counted ten times, I moved. I did started with Bart's three. He stunned seven times every ten times. Like so, I was always very comfortable with my RNG in in DCL. I have not been a lucky. Uh, Lucky young boy in in DC heroes and villains as of wow. as of now. <laughs> well, that that's that's sad to hear. I think you've got some good tunes. I don't think you're well, you're no, missing I, a I lot. I do fine. I do fine. But you know, like it's a listen. It's those five star. It's a one. It's a one percent chance every right. single time. 
Yeah. So 1% every single time is not good odds. Yeah. Um, and, but some, some people get very lucky and they get them sooner than your last pull where it says you are guaranteed a five star. I've got, and I've gotten three five stars on one on pulls that I was not guaranteed. Well, I get no surprises. <laughs> like, well, it's just... look, I'm on the pity pull train myself. Yes. Uh. The pity pull train is, is, <laughs> is real all aboard. All right. Uh, uh, because that's when I that's when I get my characters, and then you just have this huge letdown. Not that because I haven't maxed out any five stars, so right. every every pull is relevant. Um, but you get that one where you're just like, all right, give me something new, give me something new, give me something new. And it's like, I I love my Starfire, but I've got but I've gotten her three pity pulls in a row. <laughs> and it's like, Damn you it. know what the best thing was was um, coming into the game before the end of the month last month and i really wanted the bane character couldn't get it couldn't get it couldn't get it couldn't get it finally the morning like an hour before the turnover goes i pull my pity pull is bane yeah and it felt like getting mcdonald's breakfast at 10 29 it was awesome <laughs> <laughs> no but see that's that's the thing is the game is that there's a part of the luck that's really exciting yeah and then there's a part of the luck that's really disappointing. Sure. Um, you know, so it, it is what it is. Like, I'm okay with the, the 1% is 1%. You, you know, you're you're really never, you never can expect getting a five-star until that pity pull. Um, where I've had really bad luck, though, is on just getting the purple characters. Um, I, I went, I, I had two separate instances where I went over 60 pulls with not one purple. Okay, mm. and that was frustrating because the purple ones, not that I need them, because I've I've maxed out every four star except for Scarecrow, of course, because <laughs> they, they would never give me him. Okay. Um, but I've maxed out every other four star over the life of this thing. But the reason I want the four stars now is I need that um, uh, currency. Oh, yeah. To get your people up to gear eight, gear nine. Um, and, and so now I'm sitting in the shop and I'm watching all these like very, very rare, like once every two weeks, um, gears pop in the shop. Well, I don't have anything to buy them with because I can't fall fucking purple to save my goddamn life. <laughs> so that's, what's been frustrating to me, uh... but listen, it, it, it's been a, it's been a great distraction. You don't have to play it all day, every day. Right. Um, it's been a great distraction with DCL dying. I don't know how involved I'd be if DCL was still here, um, but I'm I'm involved because DCL isn't. And yeah, yeah, you know, I, yeah, it's been good. Yeah, I think you know I I, I echo that sentiment. I mean, look, I, I'm not here because you know DCL is dead, but you know it's if, if it was still around, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe I would do both the same way I did Snap for a while. I mean, you don't need you don't need a lot of time to no. do DC heroes and villains. Like right these. now, they just in, they just released this last week these gauntlets. Right, that are very time consuming. Yes, uh, and don't have great rewards. But you can also just put it on auto and walk away. Sure. Um, and just if the heroes and villains teams are listening, because I know you do subscribe to the podcast. Um, the ones that have like 23 legs in these gauntlets, <laughs> um, get rid of those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's do, let's do the ones that do 11, 11 legs or 10 legs or whatever. Those are fine. These 23 leg, what, cause the 10 ones give like two or three gear mats per node. The 23 yeah. gauntlets give, give one, one. Gear mat per, yes. so you get the same freaking thing for doing 11 fights for one thing as you get for doing 23 fights for the other. And it's just, you know, we were talking online the other day, a lot of those gauntlets, even if you're just sitting there, I'm watching football yesterday and, you know, whatever, and just clicking it. It took me over 50 minutes to finish one. Yeah. Now, listen, I'm doing other things, so it's not like it's keeping me from anything. Um, but that's a bit extreme. Yeah, it is. And I have a similar story where matches would take so long that my battery <laughs> my poor battery and my poor iPhone, I, I, iPhone 13, just almost depletes to nothing. For one mythic scroll. Right. 
I got to start carrying a Mophie case with me everywhere I go. <laughs> no, um, no, but um, so we got that coming. Are we going to talk about the potential new campaign level in the game as well? Well, all I've heard, like, because I don't, I, I've been, I've been uh, having a huge diet of uh, Discord servers of late. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've cut back significantly. <sighs> You're my hero. Um, so w- from the people that I guess are, are doing a lot of these things, I guess Atlantis is coming. Uh-huh. Um, so a whole new campaign of 20 Atlantis. Um, that's just what I've heard based on what everyone's saying. Um, and the other thing they're saying is that will also lead to um, something above level 50. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh we really could use the wise words of our leader here today, but yeah. she is visiting with uh, uh, folks and friends. Yeah, uh, so we'll, we can we can cover that. Yeah, next we'll, time. Yeah, when, when we have when we have a crew that time. is is more informed than yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. So never fear. We'll talk more DCH and V uh, later, folks. But um, I think it's time. Love, to... Love the concept of the customized sales. Oh, I do too. For the, for the devs awesome. listening, that's right. It's fucking awesome. Just get, just give us some of those ones that can get characters to tier eight and tier nine from that last year, as right. one of them, and I'm all in. Right. It needs to be like the Wendy's breakfast meal, right? Like I'm going to have a saucy boy and ham guy or whatever the fuck it is, right? <laughs> Sa- saucy boy and Tay Tays. Right. <laughs> Two large coffees. That's my favorite one. Well, they they changed that one because <laughs> originally it was double cup of Java. Oh really? Was what he said. So there, okay. the early ones was the the guy said double cup of java. Was he canceled? I it was the same guy that says two hot right. coffees. By the way, wow. I I got that Wendy's breakfast once just out of <laughs> curiosity. Sure. The cheese on it is almost like queso, like, like it's like cheese? liquid. Huh. It, it's and it was it was very disconcerting from a texture standpoint. It didn't taste bad, right? But I, but I, I don't know if I'll go back to Wendy's breakfast. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've never had the. Bre- I can't comment on the cheese situation. By the way, that might be the but... one time I've been to a, a fast food place <laughs> in ten years. I, I tried Wendy's breakfast one morning after just trying to soak up some. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to grab some grease to get me through after a long Saturday of indulging. Right. Saturday's worth of, of binge drinking. Yeah, well. Well. And as I said, I don't have hangovers, but once in a while, if I go too long, like some Sundays with AAD involved, because I usually drink during the show, mm-hmm. um, it's an early start. And it's not that I'm over drinking. It's that I'm drinking over a long period of time. And sometimes you wake up just a little, okay, you know, maybe, maybe 14 hours wasn't necessary. (laughs) Yeah. You're finding out your body's limits the hard way. (laughs) Yeah. Um, okay. Let's shift over to a professional segue there. Let's shift over to, uh, Retmus. I want to talk a little bit about your, um, your upcoming double AD game, uh, altered Alliance dimensions. And, um, you appear. You've been do making the rounds, haven't you? You've been going on all the talk shows. Yes. You've been. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes. but you haven't been. Well, you've been on ours the whole time. So, um, why don't you go ahead and and tell people kind of where you're at and um, uh, what you're looking. Just give us a breakdown, I guess. Um. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty much going to be like in the. DC legend style. I, I may think everybody. Uh, yeah. Knows everybody that. here knows that. Right. Right. Um, I, I just wanted to do a bunch of different things. So I wasn't bound by just one genre and that's why I came up with the ultra dimensions. Right. So, you know, we could explore different things and, you know, I can have different game modes and it's not just being stuck to the same game because even though we all love DC legends, you got burnt out on it. Yeah, especially when you had to do burnout yeah right and you would do those big long raids and you know it would just burn your out burn you out and then right at the end of it then siege would start you know and just like oh man you know you, you just because it was so much of the same thing over and there wasn't enough variety 
So I wanted to mm-hmm. take what we did love and just add more to it, you know? Uh, yeah. So you, 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 you won't feel that, oh man, I've got to do this. You know, you'll be like, oh, I can just right. jump over here and do this. I like this mode or I can jump over here and do that. And, and that's kind of like what I wanted to do just to make it always fresh to you and fun to do. And, and that's why I want to be, you know, uh, have, you know, a voice with the community and see what everybody likes, what can be implemented and just have fun with it. I mean, that's, that's all I truly want is to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've seen the preview clips of it, I know I have, and I know Biff has, and all of us here in WD, we've all got spoiler alerts for a lot of this stuff, but, uh, I mean, the gameplay looks smooth as hell. Um, and the the characters look fantastic. Um, it's obvious that he's put a a, a shit ton of work into it. So, (laughs) yeah, it does not, that does not, does not get lost when you watch this stuff of, of how much time and effort and if you know Retmus as as you know as we we have grown to over the last few years um dude is attention to detail <laughs> okay so you're gonna get something that w- more effort was put into than what you're gonna have you know you put into it from a you know from a consumer or you know standpoint like he's given you a lot for what you know, bang for your buck, basically. Yes. There you go. Right. And but your buck goes a long way. That's right. One buck. How much does one buck get you, Bretmas? <laughs> one buck? I don't know. I'd have to pull up the uh, pricing charts and stuff, but I'm sure you can actually get some for a buck. Yeah. For, right th- for three bucks, you can get a saucy boy and some tay tays. There you go. Saucy boy <laughs> and some tay tays. <laughs> Two large coffees. I like that guy. <laughs> He's awesome. No, um, I have some questions for Rhett. On, yeah, go on the for game. it. Because, yeah. because here, here. So I was, I was lucky enough to be able to see, um, kind of the manual of the game, mm-hmm. um, which is, which is awesome. Uh, and and just the one thing that really struck me in going through it was the names of the buffs and debuffs. Because I know you think coming off DCL and other games that you're just going to get your normal um, taunt uh bleed um you know just the the normal things speed up uh all the normal things but Rhett did an amazing job and I, i've been called in my professional career a lot of times a wordsmith where i i kind of you know i, I say things in, in a in a different way and Rhett did an unbelievable job of naming um the buffs and debuffs to have something different than we're used to but also try the buffs I've never or buffs and debuffs I've never seen before. Um, you know, like for example, instead of taunt, it's provoke. You know, I, I think I think a lot of the words are, are, are better suited um to that, but also there are some buffs and debuffs that I've never seen before that I, I am extremely and Rhett, maybe if you could just spend like a minute talking about each of these, um, you know, like I saw bomb. Like that mm-hmm. was something that was really interesting. It says twenty five percent health, and it says source based after two turns. Like, you know, that's one that's very interesting to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, for the buffs and debuffs, uh, I always really disliked. I mean, like my whole goal is things that I dislike, the community disliked before in other games. I'm trying to alleviate that and make it work in a game for us now. Uh, for example, all the um, bleeds, disease, you know, mechanics, they don't work on bosses. So you can't bring characters you really like against them. So they're automatically neutered just because their kit revolved around an ability that automatically stops on the boss. So that's when I came up with the source-based and target-based for the buffs and debuffs. So whenever you would go and apply a wound on a boss, it's going to go off of a percentage of your health, like your maximum health capacity. So if you had, you know, a thousand life, it's automatically, if it was a, you know, 10%, it's going to do like, you know, hundred damage automatically because it's based off of what you're applying to them. So that way your, your characters aren't neutered. You can still do those, but then there's other uh, buffs or debuffs that go off of the target base that actually will go, uh, you know, from 
the uh, bosses you're fighting or any opponent you're fighting, their actual life energy as well. So I've, I'm trying to find that balance where we're not neutering characters because of their kit base. And it, it, you see the, these different things and looking at them, and there's a lot more buffs and buffs than we're used to. Um, talk to me a little bit about this, because this is one that jumped off the screen at me. Okay. Um, curse. So <laughs> um, it, it says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> no, he cursed. Um, <laughs> curse. Uh, it, you know, and the, and the definition of this is one that I think we've all thought of with all these you know master kit makers on reddit that try to re <laughs> re rework everything and everything but curse says prevents all passive abilities i mm -hmm. find that as someone that you like you that's very big on passives yeah I, I find that fast i that one was the one that just jumped off the screen to me well i mean we have abilities that pretty much do everything i mean you can take strength away defense away health away you have you know uh pretty much an immunity for like everything in the game so but we never had anything that could like stop i mean we had silence i mean and we had uh enrage you know that we didn't even get a chance to choose what you wanted but so they were kind of limited but then what really irritated me was trigon and his passive and because I had actual videos that I recorded to where the enemy team never got to go one single time. <laughs> right. And I lost the fight because of Trigon's passive wiped me out with all those freaking. <clears throat> anyway, that's in the past. <laughs> right. No need to dredge up old feelings. And, right. it, will never, and it will never happen to you again, Rep, right. I promise. It, yeah. Right. <laughs> so I just wanted to come up with, you know, a type of debuff that you can place on them just like anybody else you know can work one or two turns you know and prevent you know their passives from you know happening because like if you can prevent their active ability from happening why not their passive and i just thought it was a mechanic that was left out and i just wanted to add it to it i i see another one that does almost everything <laughs> and it's called and, and this is one where I really hope I get a job soon because I want to make sure I get I get that um, omnipotent tier last character from your uh, Indiegogo. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but and this is a perfect one for the character I would want to create. Gotcha. Which is Doctor Jonathan Crane, and um, it's called Petrify. And and not only does it stop passives, it also prevents active and purges all buffs all at once so this is probably one of those things as a monster monster cooldown yeah. um it, you know that, that is kind of like if you can use it once a week and <laughs> at the right time it's a big deal but like yeah. that's one that oh, this gosh. Th this particular ability was what i came up with for medusa okay. when medusa is being added to the game I, nice. she was going to have this ability where she could actually pretty much if you're stunned it stops all your active moves anyway. So I was putting on like, basically it's going to stun, you know, petrify you. It's going to stun you, but not only did you, you can't do your active abilities, if you're stunned in your stone or whatever, you're petrified, you shouldn't be able to do your passives as well. And then being that scared, all your buffs drop off. So I was going to, that's what I had in mind for this ability. Somebody like that, of that level. Makes sense. When you unfreeze, they have to start over. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Crane and Medusa, partners in crime. <laughs> I know. Is it A, B? Go. Where does he fit into that Medusa scheme? I don't know. Ooh. Medusa is actually one of my favorite characters. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to have her, her and her sisters in it. So nice. you're going to have three. Three Gorgons. Gorgons. Nice. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I have lots of, uh, of plans that I want to do. And it's just, you know, it, it's just time you know, creating all the different models and animations, things like that. I don't want to reveal everything I'm, I'm going to do, you know, of course, because yeah. then other game companies steal ideas, you know, from you that have like a larger budget and you just all of a sudden are like, hey, I just said this last month and now all of a sudden this game company has it out. And then like, it kind of makes you wonder in your head where they get that idea. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, not that they're sitting there watching or listening to our shows, but somebody could have mentioned it that they heard in passing or something like that. So, you know, I kind of keep a little tight lip on a little bit of stuff like that, but, you know, uh, we're welcome to talk about any of the buffs or debuffs that you want to go over, Biff. There's any other ones that you like or. No, I, those, I just want to cover. I just want to get, you know, have everyone know that some of these are really fun and really different. Mm -hmm. And I think just some of the words you use to describe them, describe them perfectly, but describe them differently than you're used to seeing. So I, I think it's, I, I, that was of, of everything I took from the, you know, eight or 10 pages of the manual. That was what, what my note was, was I love how you defined and how you set up the buffs and debuffs. Um, I, I thought you did a, just an amazing job. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm trying. By the way, you want to hear a quick story about a big company stealing a, a, a person's idea? Sure. So I was a senior in college and I was a marketing major with a concentration in advertising. And one of my senior projects was building a new product for a company I created or an existing company or whatever. You had to create a product and you had to build a complete marketing plan, uh, print, TV, um, create commercials, like do all of these things. Well, I, I chose Champion, which is at the time was a big apparel uh, company. Um, and I decided to create Champion Team Stores um, where there were stores that just all just sold Champion apparel. And in my project, the detail in it was not only um, TV commercials and print ads and all this stuff. And this is in the mid 90s, so it's not pre-internet. Um, it was also, uh, I, did, I went as far as to build a planogram and a design of what the store would look like, where sweatshirts would reside, where, you know, sweatpants would reside, where tracksuits, you know, and all of this things. So I'll cut to the chase. Fast forward. So when I graduated from college, I reached out to them about a marketing job and I shared part of my um, project with them. Just to say, hey, I've looked at you guys. This is my senior class project I did on your company. That's how interested I am. You know, can I get an interview for your marketing team? They came back and they said, we're not hiring at this time. But at the time, they faxed me a form and asked me to sign a release form to say that, you know, that they could use my ideas. And I said, no. Because I said, if you're not even willing to give me an interview, I'm not even asking for a job for it. I'm just asking you to, you know, can I introduce myself for 30 minutes? So I didn't sign it. Um, I didn't, so I didn't fax it back. Fast forward eight years later, I'm at Madison Square Garden for the Big East Tournament um, basketball game. And over the loudspeaker, they say, please join us on the concourse near this section for the grand opening of our um, champion team store. And I was like, that sounds familiar. Mm. And I ran, I got out of my seat, I ran to the concourse, I went over to the exact place they said, I walked into that store, they copied down to my design for where the products resided to wow. a fucking T. They didn't even change anything. Wow. Did you sue him? It was so, so I got on the phone to a lawyer and they said, oh yeah, this is open and shut seven figures. Just send me the facts. Send me the, the, the facts they sent you asking for the release of the information. And I was like, oops, <laughs> don't have, I didn't it keep that. Right. I yeah. didn't keep that fact. So there was absolutely no case. That's fucked up. But it just shows you. People will take your ideas. Oh, yeah. Fucked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's just super fucked up. People suck, man. <laughs> Remember, corporations are people. Remember that. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Anyways, um, we've had a fine fucking show today. What a good show to have. Our first one without a lot of DCL in it. And uh, fucking A. But we, still, we still did mobile gaming. Yeah, we still did mobile gaming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. 
Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take it around the horn and get your guys' last words. Um, Retmus, what do you want to tell the people, buddy? Um, I just want to, you know, thank you guys as always, you know, for, you know, having a show. Let me be part of it. I, I, it's pretty much a highlight in my escape for the week. Um, I want to thank everybody that has uh, donated to the Indiegogo page. I greatly appreciate that as well. We're moving along. I'm hard at, at work um, sculpting out new models for the game, new characters. And I'm going to try uh, and put up a little bit of the sculpts um, as I get them you know, done, uh, just to share the progress of new character designs and stuff on the uh, WAD channel that we have and on the Owls uh, Dojo channel as well. Oh. So you can always uh, tune in for that one uh, to take a peek of like what I'm doing. Um, I'm just saying, I just, thanks to everybody that's just helping me out, helping me make this dream a reality. Um, it would be very hard to do this without everybody because I've actually did calculations of like all the stuff that a, a person needs to do this. I mean, corporations get like big loans or they already have a footing in the industry. So they have the cash to do it. And, you know, as an individual, it's very hard to come up with everything you need to truly make it worthwhile. I mean, anybody can halfway throw something together and put it out there, but it's not going to have the level of detail that you want to play. And that's what I'm trying my best to accomplish. And just anything would help. Just get out there, help me. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Will do. Thank you, Retmus. You are a gentleman and a scholar, sir. All right, Biff, not only do you get to follow Repmus, you get today's last word. I get the final word for the first time. For the first time I've, ever. I've, I've been on this podcast since episode five, <laughs> and I have never gotten the last word. Ooh, make um, it good. Well, I, I'm just going to continue on what Repmus said. Please, um, you know, we all, we all have different times of our lives where you know, life is life, right? <laughs> um, where it's not always in the cards to throw money um, at at different things. Like, uh, you know, I've been out of work for almost seven months. And by the way, that was my choice. So that no, there's no crying for Biff. He'll, he'll be fine. Um, I decided to 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 make a jump and choose some uncertainty to create something bigger in my life. Um, and it's going according to plan and I'm excited about it and, um, doing some amazing things and really enjoying, uh, what I'm doing. But that also came at a time where now it's like, Hmm, I'm looking at this Indiegogo and I'm like, okay, well, what can I do with no money coming in, um, and, and still being scared? Uh, so I completely get, uh, that not everyone's in position to help, um, you know, I, I was almost embarrassed the tier that I bought, um, but I but I, I did it as just more of a symbolic gesture to Rhett to say, "Hey, I'm behind you on this." Um, so if if life permits, uh, get in there because um, this is this is something that we're all going to enjoy for a long time, and there will be no as Rhett, Rhett would not as he just said would not release something that wasn't top notch. And although having to do it himself isn't easy, um, it'll be released when it's, when it's top notch and anything you can give helps speed up that process and helps us get to the point where we can play a game. That's going to be as good as that better than DCL. Um, and that's it. And that's it. Thanks, guys. You guys rock. And with that, we will take this thing around and say goodbye. We want to thank all of you for taking the time to be with us today. Get on our website at LentusAfterDark.com. Grab some cool swag from the merch store. Get on Discord. Talk directly with us. And then hit that subscribe button because you know you want to. For Biff and for Redmus. We'll see you all right here next time for another thrilling episode of Double A-D. So long, everybody.